Thanks everyone for joining in and uh, attending the talk. I'm Raphael, I'm leading product and growth at Arrakis. Arrakis is a decentralized market making protocol. And today I'm here to talk to you about HOT, HOT AMM, which is an MEV over uh, design for new AMM. Uh, Arrakis designed this AMM with uh, Volantis together in cooperation. And we will be launching this uh, new type of a DAX very soon. So this is re really exciting for us today. This is the first talk, public talk about uh, HOT. And HOT was a, is a creation that uh, is a reaction on what we observe in the entire on-chain trading. And we do a lot of research. We look a lot at order flow. And one thing that we noticed in the last month and yeah, sort of like the last year is this increasing importance of private market makers and they are capturing more and more of the intent order flow. And with HOT, we want to react to this and provide an alternative source of liquidity. But before we jump into HOT, I want to go back and actually yeah, start at the beginning. Why are we trading on chain? Like, If you want to trade digital assets, you have three different op options, basically. You can trade them on a centralized exchange, you can trade them on a decentralized exchange, and you can trade them on so-called hybrid exchange. So with regards, if you look there in these three uh, worlds, if you look at the different dimensions, liquidity, trade settlement, custody, and market making, what we notice is when it comes to liquidity, a, decent a centralized exchange has off-chain central limit order books where takers and makers uh, meet each other, and it's all settled off-chain. With hybrid exchanges, we've seen many different forms, but it's mainly still off-chain central limit order books, some sort of like solver auction, relatively new uh, designs there that have come up. And we see the decentralized exchanges where we have a liquidity pool, so actual LP providing liquidity. With regards to trade settlement, we see that centralized exchanges, they settle all the trades off-chain, hybrid exchanges and decentralized exchanges, they settle them on-chain. In custody, uh, we see the so-called omnibus wallets on centralized exchanges, but then we actually have self-custody for traders on a hybrid exchange, and with things happening in 2022 with FTX, self-custody becoming really important. So sort of like those hybrid exchanges and decentralized exchanges have become more favorable for traders. For us as a market maker at Arrakis, the market making side is really important. And we see that in a centralized exchange, there's centralized market makers. So all the parties also providing the maker quotes and the order book, they're all centralized. Well, then in a hybrid exchange, we still, in many cases, see a centralized maker like a solver, which is a centralized party. But we actually have a decentralized taker. And then you have the DAX, where actually both the liquidity provider, the maker, and the taker, both of them are decentralized. And with HOT, we try to bring in the best of the two worlds of a DAX and of a hybrid exchange, and actually bring them together and try to overcome the weaknesses of an AMM. So looking a little bit back at the history of AMMs, what is actually the objective of an AMM? Here we have two objectives mainly. One is price discovery, so actually finding the right price for the asset. And this is largely happening by an arbitrageur coming in and bringing in outside price information, most likely from a centralized exchange, and updating the so-called stale price in uh, the AMM. And at the other side is bringing in liquidity from all sort of liquidity providers and actually centralizing this liquidity so that you and me also as retail participants can provide liquidity, but also institutional liquidity providers can come in and give liquidity to the market. So the evolution of the um, automated market maker, so the AMM, has seen different forms of basically math behind the scenes. And an AMM started off with this constant function AMM. This means you have x times y equals k. x is the amount of asset, uh, asset, uh, one asset, and uh, y is the amount of the other asset. And then this is always equal to k. 
those, so those sort of like where the initial like Uniswap uh, developments, like anything around Uniswap v1, Uniswap v2, where you basically provide liquidity from zero to infinity, also called like a uniform uh, uni uh, uniform liquidity distribution. And providing liquidity from zero to infinity for almost all assets is not really efficient because you provide liquidity in price ranges where there's no trading activity happening. So another concept was developed called Concentrated Liquidity AMM, and UniV3 was one of the first ones launching this, where you actually provide liquidity in a specific range. So you can provide liquidity ac across certain price ranges, and then you can rebalance those ranges to have more form of a concentrated liquidity. And this is much more capital efficient. However, still as an, a liquidity provider in a concentrated liquidity AMM, you face the so-called term impermanent loss or LVR. So if the inventory that you provide basically changes in price, there's volatility, you, sort of, you have to face some sort of loss and you have to make sure that your trading fees are actually larger than this loss. So a lot of new AMM designs and new DEX designs try to reduce the so-called LVR and also HOT goes into that direction. So resuming again the motivation for change, we're coming from this constant product AMM where we really had like an inefficient capital allocation and we're moving towards the right to get actually more capital efficiency. So the motivation between constant product to move to concentrated liquidity is really to like get active liquidity. And now the liquidity providers actually have non-fungible positions. In like a constant product AMM, usually the, all the liquidity providers have like the, the same position. While now in a concentrated liquidity AMM, everyone has their own specified liquidity position. Uh, in the AMM. And then all the new AMM designs we've seen recently and CowSwap, I see the guys there, uh, thanks for joining. It's, it's basically one of the designs, but there are many more um, designs and uh, I want to spend the rest of the talk basically to go over HOT and explain more why HOT AMM, like hybrid order type AMM, is a solution for this. So HOT AMM has three main objectives. First objective is LVR protection. So we are trying to protect the liquidity providers via an RFQ order flow. We still want to preserve this permissionless, trustless DEX design and provide the traditional swap AMM for mainly targeted at retail traders so that everyone can come in and trade at HOT. And then we have this permissioned Arrakis quoting servers that actually enables dynamic fee updates. So these are where the three main objectives when designing hot AMM. Looking behind the scenes, what happens in hot is that on the one side we have this solver type order flow. So this comes via flash, flash swaps and actually brings in like um, solvers quote, uh, competing for quotes. So solvers come in and compete for prices and they bring in price updates and updates to our dynamic fee schedule. And at the same time, it brings in the benefit that um, the, the entire like LPs in the pool get additional non-toxic order flow because to be a solver on hot, you have to be a trusted party, so not everyone. It's basically a permissioned uh, order flow. And then at the same time, we still have a regular AMM design, very similar to concentrated liquidity, where retail essentially be receives better AMM prices because solvers are competing for prices and they're frequently updating. And our objective is that in an AMM, no longer arbitrageurs are updating the price, but solvers competing for price updates uh, and bringing in the best information are, up, are updating then the AMM uh, stale price. And at the same time, we introduce dynamic fees that protect LPs from LVR because with the time in the block and AMMs are limited by the block time, we basically increase the fees for swaps and thereby at the beginning we can bring in rather low fees but then they're increasing and we create this 
dynamically rising no trade zone, essentially trying to avoid arbitrage being profitable. Looking at these dynamic fees, and uh, there's a really nice graph there on the left. I hope you can, can see it, and it's not too small. But it basically shows on the uh, x-axis the time, and then you have the price on uh, the y-axis. And then basically the lines that are drawn there, that's the, that's the price, the stale price in the AMM. And then you have the centralized exchange price moving. But Every time this line sort of breaks, this is uh, when the price is updated. This is when a solver comes in and quotes a new price. And uh, at the same time, like you have the block times on the x-axis, we can actually update um, always the price on top of the block. So this means the longer we are without an update, the longer we are waiting for another solver coming in, updating the price, the higher is the dynamic fee. And that means that we are trying to capture yeah, this arbitrage and reduce the arbitrage possible. You can see in some situations there will still be arbitrage possible. So if the centralized exchange price goes out of this no trade zone, then actually there will be arbitrage. And therefore, we are trying to minimize it. And essentially, like if you look at the equation on the right, we want to protect LPs by always ensuring in, in as many cases as possible that the trading fee is actually larger than the difference in prices between a, a centralized exchange and a decentralized exchange. By having this feature, we're actually able that, in, on average, the minimum hot trading fee is likely to be lower than the regular AMM fee because an AMM, traditional AMM, just quotes like a standard fee for all retail flow. While here on HOT, we can actually have dynamic fees and we only quote higher fees if it's really necessary to protect against arbitrage. This was a really brief yeah, X course on HOT. Uh, we haven't launched yet. We will be launching this soon. We're really excited about this. Obviously, it's only one attempt to solve this problem. There are many more. Um, but I'd like to summarize our perspective on the entire market from the research we're doing. And we think that the market will move towards many different DEX designs. Like, while well, the past has been rather like we started off with this uniform liquidity, moved to concentrated liquidity, and now sort of we are breaking out of this by many people finding different ways of designing better AMMs. We think that different solutions, dynamic fees is a very good solution to protect against arbitrage, but you can also, for example, integrate off-chain price information, like bringing in uh, information from centralized exchanges, various ways to do this. Um, we also think request for quote, so like actually this entire solver searcher type quoting mechanism is really a, way, a good way to, to solve uh, problems in the AMM space. And it means essentially that you have to discriminate traders and order flow to make sure that you avoid toxic order flow reaching your liquidity. And in protocol auctions are also likely, yeah, uh, where possibility that you can choose or a way to choose um, to avoid, um, yeah, arbitrage. Oh, no, flipped too quickly. Um, quickly talking about Arrakis. So you might know Arrakis as this automated liquidity manager. Uh, but Arrakis is more than uh, this. Arrakis is a decentralized, permissionless, on-chain market maker. We focus on two uh, sectors. On the one hand, we're building out infrastructure. So we're an infrastructure protocol. Hot AMM is one of the uh, solutions that we or products that we will be launching to the market soon. And we try to bring in innovation to the entire DEX and market making uh, sphere. And at the same time, we're serving algorithmic strategies to our clients, being the uh, DAOs and uh, labs um, and teams uh, raising um, money via tokens, launching tokens, but also providing a sustainable uh, liquidity providing uh, strategies. So that marks the end. I'm happy to take any questions uh, up front. And yeah, thanks for attending. 
And yeah, hope you get excited about HOT and feel free to follow Arrakis at uh, Finance on uh, yeah, Twitter and Telegram. We will be posting updates soon. There's also our research paper about HOT AMM was released a couple of weeks ago. So uh, if you want to dive into detail, um, the paper is public. You can read up on uh, this. Thank you for the talk. Uh, what part of the benefit of your uh, protocol comes from uh, things like the dynamic pricing versus uh, stuff that you cannot do without basically being uh, hybrid in a way? So the hybrid part is really the solver order flow. So interacting with trusted parties which are permissioned to access liquidity. And that brings in the price information and sort of segregates the order flow. And we can make sure that from solvers, we only get non-toxic order flow for updating our prices. So this is really for bringing in price updates. Instead of relying on arbitrageurs, we want to rely on solvers to update the price. The dynamic fees is a measure of reducing arbitrage while we're waiting for the next solver to give us this new price update. It's hard to quantify before you launch it, I, I would say. Um, let's see. Um, yeah. Like, we will, we will be launching this soon, and then we can definitely measure this. But right now, to, it would be pure guess, I would say. Um, if there's only um, your hot um, AMM, Mm -hmm. for a specific uh, liquidity source, is it possible that it basically gets stuck? Because if the fees increase uh, for trading on the pool, there's like, and it's uh, the only liquidity source, could it be that nobody is like incentivized to like settle any arbitrage like um, trades for, for a specific token, for example? Good thought. Um, I mean, essentially would need to have a solver coming in to provide price updates if we solely rely on this. Otherwise, the price would basically stay there and then the fees would be, would be increasing. I think HOT really is a solution first for like more liquid assets. And we're not planning to launch like tokens which are very illiquid and not trading elsewhere. I think in, initially we will be starting with tokens that are yeah, more common and tradable at other venues. So would you, I'm not sure if you try to, to you know, project or throw some numbers at it, but mm -hmm. would you then expect the dynamic fee increase to then ultimately benefit liquidity providers as um, upshoshers come in and try to uh, bring the price of equilibrium in to the model? And is that the intention then to benefit LPs over users? Yeah. So the intent is to benefit LPs by you have this increasing fees on the traditional AMM, and thereby it gets less and less profitable for someone take, exploiting this and doing actually an arbitrage, because this AMM, like the right side in, in the diagram is actually permissionless. Everyone can come and everyone can ARP into this pool. So you have dynamic fees while we're still stuck with a stale price. People could come in and actually ARP the pool um, because we have to wait until a solver reaches our uh, liquidity and provides this new price update and then actually can reset the fees because with a solver we have a trusted party where we know this is actually the true price from an external venue. And thereby, like we aim at increasing this no trade zone so that actually no toxic order flow can reach our liquidity. But at the same time, obviously, also compensate the liquidity should someone come in and actually trade against the liquidity. Yeah. I would have a question uh, regarding the user perspective. 
um, like if the fees are dynamic, would they, and there are these large no trade uh, zones, how you call them, uh, would there be like longer times where it doesn't make sense for a user to tr trade on, on hot DEX and uh, rather use, let's say, a, a DEX aggregator? Um, because otherwise you would always need to um, keep track of the dynamic prices and prices somewhere else. And you may get a, a very bad deal because the um, no trade zone is quite big. So ideally, from a user perspective, you come via intent-based trading, and then you have a solver basically filling your trade. That's the one side. If you interact with the AMM, sort of like, obviously, the fees will be rising. So it makes sense you can then quote also like what price you want to settle against. And then you basically can trade after an update, right? So you can wait. and. In an ideal world, these updates will be very frequent. So ideally, we get an update from a solver every few blocks, and then uh, you, we will not reach this territory where prices or like where the trading fees are actually surpassing a traditional AMM uh, fee. It's just like this traditional AMM cannot react with its prices, so it basically needs to charge a certain price, and you see like more volatile pairs being on like higher fee tiers than like stable tokens or uh, staked uh, like stake packed assets and there you already have lower fee tiers for us what we want to achieve is that the average trading fee that the user like the retail user gets is actually below, below a traditional amm yeah makes makes sense thanks thank you Um, with uh, Uniswap at the moment, um, if there's a fixed amount of liquidity, as the price moves, uh, the depth changes. Is that the same with this design, or as the price is updated, all the liquidity, just for, say, one of the assets, stays at the same depth, or does the depth change? It's going to be the same. So the traditional AMM for accessible for everyone, like the permissionless AMM, that's going to be a concentrated liquidity AMM. And then this liquidity is also accessible for solvers. So we have to sort of like the sovereignty where you can think of like it's a sort of like a pool with a hook where a solver can come in and actually also access this liquidity where um, the competition of different solvers actually quoting for the best price and bringing in updates. So as the solver updates the price, they're not actually taking assets out of the pool? It's just a, like yes. an oracle? Okay. Yeah, exactly. So they're trading against this liquidity by competing for the liquidity. Okay, cool. Thanks. Cool. Awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs>